This young lady has a one-year history of unusual episodes of dizziness, which are not really characterized by spinning, but more of a sustained tilt to the left side each time for about 10 minutes. Uh, but you seem to be able to tell when these events are going to occur, is that right? Yes. It... So what, what is the first symptom you feel and how long before the event does it occur? So I typically get aura, so I get blotchiness or spots on the outside of my vision for about a day before I get any other symptoms and then about a minute or so before I get the tilting, I get ringing in my left ear and then after the ringing subsides and I get the tilt to the left. And then that's followed by um, pressure or a sharp pain above my left eye that can last from anywhere from minutes to days depending on my stress level at the time of the attack. That's interesting. And do you ever have a sense of fullness in your left ear? Yeah, so when I get the ringing and the tilting, uh, it seems like I'm almost underwater. And then that resolves very quickly? Yes, that will resolve after the tilting goes away. So when I get to the pain in my, above my left eye, there's no more of that fullness feeling. Uh, so my hearing is back to normal, but then there's the pain. So. Yes, and your audiometry is perfectly normal, like high in the normal range across the entire range in both ears. Uh, in particular, there's no sign of a low frequency hearing loss that we watch for in my specialty. And uh, your vestibular testing was all normal as well. There was, uh, however, a little bit, bit of abnormality with your um, ability to follow visual targets. So yeah. We call it smooth pursuit abnormality, which um, we, when we see it in a younger individual, we think sometimes that it's not the inner ear, uh, it is the brain that's processing and coordinating the information between the inner ear and the eyes. Now, you've noticed that these episodes are more like, which are occurring about twice a week, are more likely to occur uh, in a few separate situations. One is uh, with stress. Yeah, so it's, they seem to be linked to my stress level, if I travel, and my fatigue level. Uh, those seem to be the three main triggers that I've been able to, I guess, through my observations, link through most of my attacks. Yeah. So when you came in this morning, you had started having a visual aura. Yes and we put some 2% lidocaine in your nose. We put a half cc on each side. Mm -hmm. And uh, within just a few minutes, that visual aura disappeared. Yeah. And that's um, kind of unusual, uh, it seems, in your experience. There hasn't been anything that you've been able to do um, w other to break that um, once it starts. Yeah, so far, um, everything I've tried to break the cycle seems to have not worked, but the numbing seems to have rapidly worked. <laughs> Good. Well, um, we're going to treat you with uh, some diet modification, lifestyle modification to avoid yeah. fatigue stre and stress um, as possible, but also a medication to elevate the threshold mm -hmm. for triggering of migraine initially. And if you do have episodes, uh, we can prescribe this lidocaine as a spray. Okay. Uh, and you may be able to abort episodes if they if you have breakthrough and uh, we'll see uh, and uh, with time what is the most workable strategy for you okay. I thank you very much great. for sharing your experience uh, I'm sure yeah. there are others who are having very similar um, um, problems uh, and who are having difficulty finding a suitable treatment yeah I hope it helps